Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and with me I have my daughter. Ansley. And what are we gonna draw and paint today? A butterfly. A blue butterfly. So let's get started. So for today's setup, you can see I have two pieces of paper, one for Ansley, one for me, and we've just taped them down. Um, if you want to just draw this butterfly, you can use any paper you want, and you can use markers or colored pencils to color it in, but today we're going to actually paint our butterflies with watercolor. So what we've done is we've used watercolor paper today. This is uh, cold pressed cotton watercolor paper. And the reason we want to use watercolor paper when we use watercolor is that it just works so much better with the water and the paint and it, it absorbs it, it disperses really well. So um, if you're gonna paint it, make sure you're using appropriate paper for that. So we're gonna actually start by drawing the butterfly, right? We have our iPad set up here with our reference photo and um, a couple of things about the butterfly. First of all, I think it's probably best to start in the middle. What do you think? Good. Yeah? So what I'm going to do is, if you're watching, I'm going to start with the very middle of my paper. Can you find the middle of your paper? Yeah. And so right there in the middle, that's where the middle of the butterfly's body is going to go. Do you know what the butterfly's body is called? This is called the thorax. Thorax. And this is the head. So the head is just a little circle on top of the thorax, which is a little, it's a little oval. Yeah, go ahead and try. Is that the thorax? Mm hmm And then the head. And then the bottom part of the butterfly's body is called the abdomen. Good. Okay, so we've got our butterfly's body. Let's draw the antenna on. The antenna are just two curved lines that come right out of the head. There. All right, now the hardest thing about drawing a butterfly is probably making it symmetrical, making sure that the wings are the same size and that they're even. So we have a couple of things that can help with that. To start out, let's mark the center point of the thorax with two straight lines coming right out of the side. All right, so that's gonna show us where the top wing and the bottom wing touch. This is the middle between the two wings. Okay, next I'm gonna find a spot up here towards the corner and I'm gonna decide that that's gonna be the top of my wing. wing. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side so that we can try to make it even. So find a spot that's about the same distance away and those are gonna be the tops of our wings. Good. And then all we have to do is either start at the top of the wing or by the head, and we're gonna draw a swooping line connecting, ooh, like that. And we do the same thing on the other side. Good, those look so even, nice job. Okay, let's do the same thing for the bottom wing. I'm gonna find the middle point of the bottom wing. I'm gonna say it's gonna be somewhere like right here, so not as far over as the top wing was, but maybe a little in closer towards the butterfly, and that's where the bottom middle of our butterfly's hind wing, it's called, is gonna go. So these are the hind wings, and these are called the fore wings. Perfect. Now we find a spot just next to the abdomen, and we're gonna draw a swooping line connecting our dot to the abdomen. Do that on both sides. It looks so funny. Wow, good job. Okay, now we just need to finish our wings. So on this butterfly, the sides of the wings are a little bit bumpy. Do you wanna to try to do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's just copy our photo. And you can add bumps all the way down the side of the butterfly's wings. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and connect it to our middle line. See how we connected it to our center line? Good. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Bump, bump, bump. And then connect it to your center line. Good job. All right, let's complete the bottom wing. Now there's a little bit of a dent. Do you see how the wing curves in? And so it's not a straight line all the way down. There's a little bit of a, a point in there. And so we're just gonna create that first. 
on both sides to show where the bottom wing starts. All right. And then all you have to do is connect them again with your bumpy side wing. <laughs> Nice job, that looks awesome. All right, now our beautiful blue butterfly here has these black markings that come all the way around the sides of the wings and the body of the butterfly is black. So I think today what we'll do is we'll just trace that with Sharpie. You got your Sharpie? Okay, so Ansley added on the wing veins but take a look again at your picture. Do you see how the wing veins kind of connect all the way up to the body? They're not just little lines that go back and forth. Watch me for a second. The wing veins always come back to touch the body. Okay. I'll connect them a little bit. Yeah, if you want to make a butterfly look really realistic, then you add the wing veins. You know, I wouldn't outline the veins with the Sharpie, if I were you. I know you've already done some of them, but the veins in the picture, they're not very dark black, are they? Yeah. Really, it's just the outside of the butterfly and the butterfly's body that are black. So, um, so maybe just finish by outlining the outside of the wings with black. And if you see any black lines in the butterfly in our picture, try to copy that on your drawing. So I made the top a little bit thicker. Now, neither of our butterflies is perfect. They don't look exactly like the photograph. Right. But that's okay. It's just important to have tools so you know how to draw a butterfly anytime, anywhere. You understand how its shape is. Nice job keeping the white spots in the wings. Okay, while Ansley's finishing up her butterfly's black outline, I'm going to show you the watercolor I'm using today. This is called Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus Fine Art Watercolor, and it actually comes in eyedropper bottles. What's really fun about this kind of watercolor is that it's super pigmented. The color is just so strong and vibrant. It's just really easy to use for kids' projects because it flows so easily on the wet paper. We're gonna use phthalo blue for the wings of the butterfly, and then we're gonna do some fun splattering effects at the end, and Ansley chose yellow. But of course, you could use any watercolor you have around your house for this. I'm adding a little bit of water just to dilute it slightly. All done? Yeah. That looks great. Okay, you got your paintbrush? Mm. Do you want to maybe add just a few more veins to match the other side? Oh, so they match. Very good. More symmetry. Beautiful. All right, the first thing we're going to do when we start painting is we're actually going to paint with water. Is that weird? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it'll look really cool, trust me. Okay, so grab your brush and dip it in the water. And then just paint the white part of the wings with some water. Okay. 
So what we're doing is we're wetting the paper. We're going to use something called the wet in wet, wet in wet technique with watercolor. And that's where you use wet paint on wet paper. This is why it's important to use watercolor paper when you're doing a project like this because if this was printer paper or something wood based like that, the paint would just kind of puddle around and it wouldn't soak in very well. So alright, is it all wet? All the way around on the white parts? Good. So take your brush again and grab some wet blue paint and just drop it in. For the light. And watch it just bloom. If you want to get a really cool effect with it, you just put the paint in the middle and then use water and kind of push it away towards the wings and then it'll be lighter towards the ends and darker in the center. But of course, it's your butterfly, so paint it however you want. Sometimes while the paint is still wet, you can just push and pull it around. I think it's kind of magical looking, the way it blooms on the paper. Yeah. All done? Okay, we need to let that dry before we do any spattering. So we'll wait for that to dry and then we'll finish our painting. Okay, we've let our butterflies dry and I've actually pushed the iPad aside because this very last step can get a little messy. What are we gonna do next? Add some splatters. Add some splatters. Okay, so we've already got our yellow paint on the palette. Our brushes are a little bit damp. You wanna wet your brush one more time? And let's grab some yellow paint and just tap your brush like this. You ready? Go ahead. I'm going to add a little bit of blue too. Me too. Are you happy with your spatter? Yeah. All right. That looks great. What color butterfly should we do next time? How about orange? <laughs> yeah. We really hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. We will be posting new videos just for kids every Tuesday and more fun painting videos on Thursdays and Saturdays. So be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video and share with all your friends who are interested in learning art. Thank you so much for watching today. We hope you enjoyed this video.